Hello friends. Today in this session we will discuss terrain of an area which is important for design of roads and also what are the design parameters which are influenced by the terrain as given in different IRC codes. Terrain of an area is classified by the general slope of the country across the roadway alignment and I will explain this term across the roadway alignment until later. But let us understand what is the country slope. The topographic slope of land in India are classified into five categories and these five categories are given by Survey of India and these categories are flatlands where you have a slope of 10 to 20 meter per kilometer and under this flatlands also there are two categories one is coastal flatland another is interior flatland. Gentle slope lands 20 to 80 meter per kilometer moderately Steep slope lands 80 to 150 meter per kilometer, steep slope lands 150 to 600 meter per kilometer and very steep slope lands which have a slope of more than 600 meter per kilometer. If you look at the map of India which is provided by survey of India and here you see the different colors, the different colors basically indicate different slopes. The first is flat terrain. Now flat terrain can be as I told you it can be either coastal or it can be inland. The, the This flat land is not strictly horizontal but the slope or elevation difference may be less than 10 meter per kilometer. 10 meter per kilometer and there are vast regions where the gradient in the country is less than 10 meter per kilometer and this category of land generally exist all along the coastal area of India and they are shown here by this lime green color in this map and they are called coastal flat lands. The elevation difference of interior flat lands may range from 10 to 20 meter per kilometer and mostly they exist in the interior parts of India adjacent to the coastal zone running from Cape Comorin of Tamil Nadu in the south to Narnol of Haryana in the north. In fact, the entire southern part of northern India are interior flatlands and these are distributed along the Indo-Gangetic plains from Mathura in the west to Patna in the east. Then second category is gentle slope. Gentle slope terrain and this region of India have an elevation difference of 20 to 80 meter per kilometer and this is distributed at three kinds of altitude at elevation over 500 meter above mean sea level, at elevation 100 to 500 meter above mean sea level and at elevation up to 100 meter above mean sea level. The gentle slope lands occupy a major part of central India and these land areas are distributed around Sikandrabad, Baitul, Chindwara, then Hajaribagh area and even some part of Kashmir Valley and the extreme northeast region of Jammu and Kashmir state also have a gentle slope terrain and this is shown here by orange brown color on this map. Then land with moderately steep slope has the elevation difference of 80 to 150 meter per kilometer distance and a very vast stretch of lands in India are belonging to this category. Such regions are lying at an altitude of 500 meter and above zones from mean sea level. The residual hill portion of central India or along the flanks of western Ghat area come under this category. The very steep slope gradients are distributed in the form of isolated patches representing the tops of hills and mountains, the region of Himalayan, the dark and this northeast region come under this category and they are shown here by violet color. Now let me explain this concept of country slope through this figure. Let us say this is an agricultural land and in this agricultural land you have a number of drains to be provided for irrigation of the crop 
and now these are the drains provided for flow of the water so that becomes irrigation main slope but a slope which is perpendicular to these drains that is the irrigation cross slope or the country slope say for example you have a hilly area where you have a road going through these points now the country slope here or the cross slope here will be in this direction that is perpendicular to the direction of the road similarly if you have a road in a plain terrain or in a plain area then the slope in this direction now this is the slope in this direction is the slope of the road but slope in this direction will be called the cross slope or the country slope so based on the topography of the area you can determine what is the country slope say for example you have this topography of a particular area now these are the contours of 100 meter 200 meter 300 meter and this is the elevation of the cross section so this point has elevation of 100 this has 200 300 and so on and look, say you provide a road in this area along this line of course it will not be a straight line then the country slope will be the slope from a to b and this will be the height difference between a and b divided by horizontal distance between a and b into 100 so based on this the indian roads congress has divided terrain into four categories plain rolling mountainous and steep the plain terrain is when the cross slope of the country is less than 10 percent one in ten or more than 10 rolling terrain is when the country slope is 10 to 25 percent mountainous when the 25 to 60 percent and steep when it is greater than 60 percent that is less than one in 1.67 now let me just explain how do we determine this country slope Again, I take an example, say you have the topographical map of an area where you are providing a road like this. Road goes along the contour. Now the slope of the country here will be from 1 to 4. And let us say because these are the contours of 700 meter and this is a contour of 600 meter, you can find out what is the elevation of this point 1 and point 4. Let us say elevation of this point is 740 meter, elevation of point 4 is 600 meter. So, and let us also assume that distance between 1 and 4 is 200 meter. So, slope will be this difference that is 60 meter divided by 200 meter, 1 in 3.33, and that comes under the category of rolling terrain. That is how the terrains are classified in Indian standards, and there are several parameters of road design which are influenced by the type of terrain and the first is design speeds design speeds as given in irc 73 depends upon the type of highway and for a particular type of highway it depends upon the type of terrain say for example design speed for national highway and state highway is 100 100 kilometer per hour to 40 kilometer per hour depending upon the terrain this is the ruling and the minimum. So, plain terrain will have 100 km per hour as the speed for national highway and state highway, and minimum will be 80 km per hour, whereas the steep terrain will have only 30 to 40 km per hour. Similar is the case with multi lane national highway and state highways or MDR or ODR. So, design speed of a highway will depend upon the class of the road and the terrain of the country, terrain of the area. Similarly, shoulder width for two lane roads. In case of plain and rolling terrain, the shoulder width required depends upon the type of section. Open country with isolated built up area, 1.5 meter to 1.5 meter of paved shoulder, 1 meter of further shoulder, in case of built up area, it is 2.5 meter paved shoulder and approaches to bridge, we provide 1.5 meter paved 
along with one meter of under shoulder. These are the, these are the shoulder requirement on two lane roads. But when you change the terrain for mountainous and steep terrain, requirement of shoulders will change completely. For open country with isolated built up area, that was the first category in the first case also. So for hillside, you provide only paved shoulder of 1.5 meter and on valley side, you provide paved shoulder plus earthen shoulder. And similarly for other conditions. Then another parameter is design vehicle. Design vehicle for a road also depends upon the terrain of the area. What IC 73 says that roads in the steep and mountainous terrain need not be designed for truck trail combination and may only be designed for single unit truck. And if it is economically feasible, then it can be designed for semi trailers also. And another parameter is the width of the median. Again, it is given in IC 73. The minimum width of depressed median shall be 7 meter in plain and rolling terrain. Whereas in case of mountainous and steep terrain and in built up areas of plain and rolling terrain, where there are constraints in terms of availability of land and available, available median width is 2.5 meter or less, flush median could be provided with collapsible crash barrier anti layer measures. So in case of plain and rolling terrain, the minimum width 7 meter, but in case of mountainous and steep terrain, it can be 2.5 meter also. Next is radius of horizontal curve. Radius of horizontal curve, desirable minimum radius and absolute minimum radius, they both depend upon the nature of terrain. For expressway, in case of plain and rolling terrain, it is 1000 meter to 650 meter. For national highway and state highway, again in plain and rolling terrain, it is 400 meter to 250 meter. And for mountainous and steep terrain, for national highway and state highway, this is 150 to 75 meter. You can see how it has been reduced depending upon the type of terrain. And similar tables are given in IRC 73 for other categories of the road also. And it is not only the radius of horizontal curve, but minimum rate of change of super elevation also depends upon the terrain. For plain and rolling terrain, it is 1 in 150 and for mountainous and steep terrain, it is suggested 1 in 60. In all the data are given in IRC 73. And if you look at the vertical profile of the highway, that is gradients for highways, that also depends upon the terrain. For a plain and rolling terrain, it is 2.5% of rolling gradient, where limiting gradient 3.3%. And for a steep gradient, you can go up to 6 to 7 percent. For lower category of the roads, for MDR, ODR, and village roads, the ruling, limiting, and exceptional gradients are specified for different terrain conditions here. And here also, the for plain and rolling terrain, it is 3.3 percent, for example. For mountainous terrain, it is 5 percent. And for a steep terrain, it is 6 percent and exceptionally it can go up to 10 percent. Minimum distance between fuel stations is also defined for different terrain in IRC 73. For plain and rolling terrain it says that in case of undivided carriage way it should be minimum 300 meter including deceleration and acceleration lanes. For divided carriageway with no gap in the median at this location and stretch, 1000 meter. But in case of hilly and mountainous terrain, this distance is 300 meter, clear distance is 300 meter for both category of carriageways, divided or undivided. When you design the highway, then we use a factor called vehicle damage factor. And that is the factor to account for the overloading of vehicles on pavement. IRC 37, which discusses about the design of flexible pavement, it suggests some default values of vehicle damage factor if Excel road survey is not possible to conduct in field. And these vehicle damage factor also depends upon the type of terrain. For rolling and plane, 
these values are higher whereas these values are lesser in case of hilly and steep terrain and reason is that in case of hilly and steep terrain the overloading the extent of overloading is low so these are the design factors which are dependent on the terrain so friends thank you very much for watching this video you can write your comments in the comment box and you can also suggest new topics which you like to cover in this on this platform